We previously did a video on how to sample and specifically how to use a sweep net. Today what I want to do is, is take a little time to talk about identifying the common pests that you're likely to find in that sweep net. Uh, some of these things we're already pretty familiar with. That would include the stink bug complex, uh, green clover worm, soybean loopers, and a few odds and ends. Uh, but we'll also talk about some invasive insects including the kudzu bug which is spreading across the state pretty rapidly. As we begin to discuss the common insect pests you're likely to see in your soybean field, we're going to do so kind of in a logical progression of when they're most likely to occur or most likely to cause damage in your field. The first insect we're going to discuss is the three-cornered alfalfa hopper. As you can see pictured here, this is a wedge-shaped insect. The adult is typically green in color. It's not a very large insect, uh, no more than a quarter inch in length. Behaviorally, it's kind of easy to notice because as the name implies, it does hop or pop around in the net, and, and that's very obvious. We're most concerned about three-cornered alfalfa hoppers during the early season because at that time they can feed on the stems of seedling plants, which re results in lodging potentially later in the season. Because we're most concerned about this insect early in the season, at that time we're dealing almost exclusively with adult insects. Uh, immature insects will be common. In fact, this insect will usually be more common later in the season, but at that time it causes less damage. Uh, the immature stages, of course, are smaller. They vary more in color depending on their size, but often will be green or brown. They're pretty easily distinguished from the adults because they have projections or spines on their bodies. The next insect I'd like to discuss is a new insect for us. It's an invasive insect known as the kudzu bug. Uh, this insect has and will become a pretty common problem in the state. It's rather unique looking. The adult is about the general size of a lady beetle, but as you can see, it's, it's more or less square shaped, and they range in color from brown to olive green. Populations can build to hundreds or even thousands of insects, kudzu bugs, per 25 sweeps. Now as the season progresses you're going to see more immature life stages or nymphs in the soybean field and you need to be able to recognize the immature stages. They really don't look a whole lot like the adult. They range in color from almost white to kind of a mid-tone brown. They tend to be more uh, rounded in shape but they are somewhat unique and easy to identify because their bodies are covered with some small fine hairs. The next insect, the corn earworm, is not a particularly common pest except in late planted soybeans, but it can be especially destructive and one we need to scout and be very aware of during early bloom up until about R4. The corn earworm larvae or caterpillar stage is a pod feeder. It has four pair of pro legs, which does help you distinguish it from some of the other common caterpillar pests that occur in the field, but unfortunately it's not really very diagnostic by itself. Body color also varies considerably. Uh, the body of the caterpillar will have some small hairs on it. The head capsule does tend to be light in color, which helps you distinguish it from other caterpillars in the field that also have four pair of pro legs. Next, I'd like to discuss the defoliating caterpillars that are likely to occur in Tennessee, which includes a few species such as the green clover worm and cabbage or soybean loopers. Green clover worms are the most common defoliating caterpillar observed throughout the state. They can occur any time throughout the season. The green clover worm is a green colored caterpillar that only gets about an inch long when at full size. It's unique from the other caterpillars in the field that it's only going to have three pair of pro legs in the middle of its body. Also compared to the soybean looper, which we'll discuss next, or the cabbage looper, its body tends to be uniform width from head to tail. Now both the loopers and the green clover worm may move in an inchworm type of fashion, but the green clover worm has a unique behavior in that it will flop or wriggle very violently when disturbed. So if you hold one in your hand and poke it, you'll see that it, it just goes spastic. In contrast, the soybean looper may wriggle around a little bit when you mess with it, but it won't go nearly as, as spastic when you disturb it. Now cabbage and soybean loopers are also green in color, but their body shape varies a little bit. They tend to be tapered towards the back end, so they're, they're wider towards the back and narrow towards the head end. Uh, they also have two pair of pro legs as opposed to three, which will distinguish them from almost any other caterpillar species that occur in soybean. 
As a rule of thumb, cabbage loopers may occur any time during the season, whereas soybean loopers are going to be more common late in the season during August and September. And it is important to try to recognize or distinguish the species because soybean looper is considerably more difficult to control with insecticides. Cabbage loopers typically won't have any black on their bodies. They won't have black true legs or black spots. Soybean loopers may or may not have these these black uh, spots on their body or black true legs. My recommendation is late in the season assume that at least part of the population is composed of soybean looper. Stink bugs are one of the most common pests that occur in soybean and they can occur anytime during the season although we're really only worried about economic damage once potting has begun. They are seed feeders and infestations typically develop over time and peak about R5 or R6 as we're approaching maturity. There are several species of stink bugs that may occur in soybean. The most common one normally is the green stink bug, but brown stink bugs and other species may be present as well. Most people will easily recognize the adult stink bugs as either the green stink bug or the brown stink bug. They're somewhat unique in shape and, and about the same size and a relatively large insect. Of course, the adult green stink bug is green and the adult brown stink bug is brown. Unfortunately, it gets a little bit more complicated when you start looking at the immature life stages. Uh, particularly for the green stink bug, uh, the colors and color patterns of the green stink bug vary considerably as the nymph grows towards adulthood. Immature green stink bugs will typically have black, white, or orange markings on them, and, and that changes over time as they grow from one instar to the other. Immature brown stink bugs don't vary as much in color. They tend to be yellowish to light brown in color, and that's pretty consistent from one nymphal instar to the other. As these plant feeding stink bugs cause similar damage, it's probably most important just to recognize the adult and immature stages of the stink bugs for what they are and realize that when you're making counts that you're counting both the adult and immature stages, which both may cause damage. It can also be helpful to recognize stink bug egg masses. They, they do lay their eggs in a mass of anywhere from 5 to 25 or 30 eggs. They're relatively large barrel shaped eggs and they're somewhat unique looking and when you see egg masses it can be an in indication of building populations. As I mentioned there are several other stink bugs that may occur in soybean fields. A new player on the block is the brown marmorated stink bug. It's an invasive insect that now has a pretty strong foothold in parts of Tennessee. It does its damage by feeding on seed very similar to the other stink bugs. As you can see on the image here it actually resembles the brown stink bug quite a bit. Uh, the adult stage can be distinguished from the brown stink bug usually because it has white stripes on its antennae and sometimes its legs. We've discussed in the last few minutes the most common species to cause economic damage to soybean, but unfortunately there are a number of other species that may cause economic damage on more rare occasions. So as we exit we're going to show some still shots of some insects that are commonly observed in soybean. These may include bean leaf beetles, decti stem borer, blister beetles, army worms, grasshoppers, and a number of other species. Of course it takes time and experience to learn to recognize all the different insect pests and beneficial insects that might occur in soybean. Fortunately there are a number of good online resources including our, our own utcrops.com that have photo galleries of some of the common insects that do occur in soybean. Local experts, including the University of Tennessee County Extension agents, can also help you identify insects that you might find in soybean. My take home message is to scout your soybean. With a little experience you'll get quite good at recognizing the common pests that are likely to occur in most soybean fields in Tennessee. So happy hunting!